That's why we came here. Good decision. We're back out here, Lake Lanier, with our champion, Bradley Holman. You got your second tour victory this week. How's it feeling, man? Man, it's been great. It's been a whirlwind. I hardly got any sleep last night, but uh, we just went straight back to the VRBO house and ate a little bit of uh, Jimmy Dean sausages mm -hmm. that were left for dinner last night and uh, a couple of nachos and called it good, went to bed and ready to go today. Well, your wife and kids, a couple of kids made yep. it in town last yep. night, so it's cool to have the family yep. around. Uh, like you said, you got a little bit of sleep. We're going to make you go back out. It's starting to let up rain right now. We're going to see if we can't catch fish and break down how you adjusted every day of this event to win your second tournament. Absolutely, man. Looking forward to it. Fence panda, freaking fence panda. I've been calling them fence pandas all week because they're black and white and they look like Kung Fu Panda. A little round in the belly, live on that fence. Now, how did you get dialed in on this in uh, practice? Jerk bait. So one day the wind was blowing like this and I caught a monster and then couldn't do it again. And then the next day I caught one like three and a half on a jerk bait with some wind. And then one day the wind wasn't blowing and I caught like a, I didn't catch it. I saw it follow my jerk bait. It was a monster. And uh, I mean like bigger than anything I caught in the tournament. Oh, wow. And I was like, all right, I got to figure out what they want and how they want it. And I really kind of started thinking about the swim bait in the off day. So my first, my second stop of the morning on day one, when I caught that like 19 pounds off one spot, my, my stop, the first fish ate the jerk bait. I may have caught two on a jerk bait and then they just quit biting. And I reached down and grabbed that uh, swim bait and they lit back up and I was catching them like every cast. And as soon as that happened, I, when it was going down, I was like, I got the bait for the seawall. <laughs> We're going to turn and go down this way with the boat parallel to the wall here. Be as close as we can in this wind without tearing the fiberglass of the boat up on all these. It's been a problem all week, obviously. Oh, no, get off there. Oh, no. That's right. I'm just going to stay high and out of Holman's way. Rookie. I'm going to let the pro go to work here. I'd just like to point out it's not my equipment. Uh, I'm new. It's my first day on the water in a while. I got all kinds of excuses, Holman. You think I haven't done that this week? <laughs> <laughs> Normally I would be closer to that wall, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, no sense tearing your boat up. 40 mile an hour gust. But actually this is where they should bite. If these things were small mouth, they'd be ripping right now. Oh, no kidding, man. Would you ever catch them on, like if the wind's ripping this good, would you catch them on that kind of the slack corner? Uh, no, no, they, they're gonna be where, they're that gonna prime. be right there or on that front wall. Cause I mean, just a little bit up underneath that dock, it's pretty, you know, there's not much current and they're sitting there hiding everything's being pushed up to them. It's been very difficult to get bit there before 12 o'clock every day, even on sunny days. I think we've had all the fun we can have there. You got to throw a swim bait at the seawall. What size head? Yeah, it's a half ounce uh, Buckeye J wheel head. And I believe that's a three eighths uh, Kai Tech. Let's go to the river. <laughs> All right, man, we're up the river right now which is where you spent the majority of your final day. Tell me why you made that switch. Well, basically, I'd, I, I knew that my worst practice days were when it was cloudy and rainy, because I mean, I was using the marina so much and the docks to get bit in practice. And then uh, my, uh, my first day, you know, was running points and stuff. Well, the points were real hot and going in practice before those fish really 
kind of got beat up and dwindled down. But even then, in practice, I mean, the the cloudy days, the points were were still tough on me. I mean, I still having a hard time getting bit. So when that's really where you would, I would think that they were going to bite better mm -hmm. in the cloudy weather. But it, it didn't bring them up shallower and make them more aggressive. It, it kind of allowed them to lift and suspend more in the water column and not be tight to the points and the cover of the rocks and stuff that they had been holding on on sunny days. So basically all three things that I was doing in cloudy conditions were not good. So um, what actually happened was, is I, I was just stopping on my way back in each day, um, close to takeoff here, uh, and the water was stained and I was just going to the bank with spinnerbait and day two and day three i had a couple of bites you know in a very short window mm -hmm. and um, actually day three i lost one that was over three pounds on a spinnerbait oh yeah ah yeah uh, 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 uh. and uh that was when i was like well you know the last day is going to be raining 100 percent chance and cloudy and i know that i'm going to have a hard time getting bit down the lake so that's when I tied on some spinner baits, and I wasn't getting bit anyway. Even if it had been sunny, the first hour or two of each morning was mm -hmm. tough on me down the lake. So um, it wasn't like I was really taking a big risk there to start up here for a couple hours. Well, when I started up here and I started getting bit. Look at the size of the head on that fish. I thought, well, I need to finish off my limit up here, and that's what I was fortunate enough to be able to do. I mean, I basically caught the 13 pounds that I had um, up here in the morning with a spinner bait, and in this ditch right here. I caught my biggest one in this ditch. And I came in here to throw a spinner bait, and I saw the bait, and then started seeing some fish, and I was headed to the bank with spinner bait, and they blew up in front of me, and and that's when I kind of started figuring it out. See, look at this spinner bait right here, Kyle. And then dog fennel. I mean, doesn't that just look? Oh. And I mean, that. Oh, oh. God <laughs> almighty, that was a big one. <laughs> I told you there was bass in here. <laughs> Why didn't I get that bite yesterday? All you had to do was pick up the blade. Yeah, and I got well, one tied on for you. Grab one. <laughs> done with this swim bait. So, like I was saying. <laughs> It was not a hard transition for me. That was like a four or five pound. Dude, that was a good one. Dude, that, was that was a really was a good one. one. This was one of my big concerns yesterday morning, even though when I started catching them, and, and now I know I can get bit doing it, but I, I think that the cold weather that we had right before the tournament, during the mm -hmm. beginning of the tournament, I think really hurt this shallow largemouth bite. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because believe me, the first thing in my thought, my thought process when I thought I want to do this was, is, hey man, you know, Dandy Andy, ain't gonna miss this bite. <laughs> not gonna happen and uh you know he, he had he struggled this week and so i was like you know your chances of finding that is are slim but but each day is like you know like i said i think it was the weather changed i, I yeah. bet he got bit really well in practice when it was warm and nice i bet a lot of the largemouth guys did and i, I imagine it probably went downhill with the weather and then came back later in the week as it had started to, you know, somewhat warm up. You're eyeing up her home, aren't you? Well, I just, I know that fish is there and I know mm -hmm. we can catch it. Man, tournament, I'm not leaving that fish. Catch that fish, Kyle. Let me try to, maybe it just wants a different looking spinnerbait. Well, if my, if I'd have put on a trader hook like I should have, We'd have that fish right now. You got a pretty dang good knack at saying, no, nah, I'm just gonna come right out on this thing and start throwing down and take it home. Well, Okeechobee was different. Okeechobee was about, once I had that flipping deal down, it was just about the honey hole. That's really all it was about. You mm -hmm. go there and do the deal and do it right and be patient and give it time. When you got bit, they were the ones which was somewhat the case with the swim bait on the marinas. Sure, sure. That was a, you know, be patient, do it. And when you do get bit, it's gonna, you know, you're not calling any, you know, mm -hmm, and you're mm -hmm. getting rid of whatever's in the boat. 
Because, uh, like I say, a three, three and a half pounder was a small one. Do you catch spots and largemouths doing this? Uh, yes. I weighed in all largemouth, but I've caught both up here. There's just so many spots in this lake. Yeah. The swim bait bite. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Came at it twice. <laughs> that was a good one, too. It was. I mean, I don't want to state the obvious or nothing, but. Ah, I... You just asked me, you catch spots on it? That was a big spot. It was a big spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, the blade's just not right. Something's not right, but it's close. You know, they like mm -hmm. the they like the sparkle, but they. <clears throat> so yes, I should have done this all day and not gone down <laughs> lake. You think? Yeah. Mm. But that swim bait bite, I just couldn't not go down there and do it. So. That thing, you, you throw it out there and down that side of that seawall and you just be slowly reeling it. And you know, it doesn't have any resistance, the swim bait, and it's just a boom. And it, they'd knock a foot of slack in it. You set it's the addictive. hook and you get them in and they would be hooked in the throat, like in the white part. That's how deep they'd have it. They just, it was just, the, just a really fun bite. That's my favorite part of fishing anyway, is the the initial contact. Mm -hmm. I think that we got this runoff after that real heavy rain, and I think these, it must have been warm or something because the, the bait fish just flooded these creeks. I got bait flying at me. We got, <laughs> we got a little school of them fired up. I saw about 30 of them on the graph and we peeled out there you know winning two tour events is pretty impressive but also what's impressive is the fact that this is now your second time on day five you're also the first guy to do a day five but uh it's a the small group of multiple day fivers and uh there's some pretty pretty uh big time names i don't know if you happen to know who they are or not but i'm talking john cox i'm talking mark rose i'm talking scott martin which is a pretty good group of guys to be yeah, hung out with, right? Definitely. Yeah, that ain't a bad deal. Well, at least this time we uh, got to catch a couple of fish unlike last. I know, that host you had last time, that Jody, man, uh, he just, <laughs> he's not as dialed as I am. And I'm not afraid to admit it. Yeah, I tried to show <laughs> him, but he just never could get bit. Well guys, we went out here with Bradley Hallman today and he showed us pretty much everything you need to know about how he caught his fish this week. I wish we'd actually got one in the boat, but... I'm sorry, Jody. This is a little harsh. But, you know, he's probably, right now, he's on his way home to go to Kentucky Lake and catch a couple of big ones, probably, you know, flipping a bush or throwing a spinnerbait or something. So I don't feel all that bad for him. So what happens is when you come in your trolling motor, you're spooking all those shad, and it causes that... Uh, uh, there, there was again. Oh, my God, look at the size of that thing. How, how do we catch these? They're everywhere in the boat. Where's that spoon? They're everywhere. Just keep chunking that spinner bait. I'm coming for old Sheba. She's big, man. That fish is huge. Got her. I got her. I got right. something. You got her. You got her. I don't know if it's no. It's her, dude. It's a massive one. Look at the size of that spot. <laughs> Gosh dang. <laughs> dude, look at that thing. Look oh. at that. Now see, she got double pinned. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That is one of them Lake Lanier specials. Big old chunky thing. Big old chunky thing. Now we're gonna sit here and we're gonna probably try to catch another one, but I gotta say, dude, I'm putting this down. I'm shaking your hand because that was a heck of a week of fishing and I couldn't be more happy that you got you win number two yep. on the FLW tour. <sighs> oh, but uh, I think we'll turn the cameras off, try to catch us one more before you hit the road home. Sounds good, man. Thank you. <laughs>